Hi, I'm Becky. Hi, I'm Ray. And welcome to our brand new podcast, The Unhinged Girl Diaries, where we'll be talking about everything from Molly and social media to OnlyFans and our non existent relationships. Ooh. So join us every week on Spotify and YouTube for an insight into our Unhinged Diaries. And we'll see you there. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Unhinged Girl Diaries with me, Becky. And me, Ray. <laughs> I am so excited. Yes. How was your week? I feel like I haven't spoken to you for absolutely ages. How God, was it? It's been so long. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was It was good. I bought clothes. Nice. Um, and I bought clothes. You know what? That sounds like a really successful week. Because yeah. I bought clothes too. Yeah. And I'm so excited. I feel like I very rarely buy myself any clothes. And do you know what? Same. This was a treat. <clears throat> I'm just going to... This, this nice new thing right here, um, nice jacket. Um, it's nice, I like thanks. it. Where's it from? Uh, Ego. You know what, Ego's been absolutely smashing it recently. I re- I've never ordered from there. This I is my don't... first pair. Mm, maybe I bought a pair of shoes a few years ago, but other than that, I've. Oh. this is my first clothes. First my first clothes. <laughs> my first clothing. <laughs> my first clothes ever. <laughs> that sounds like some sort of like child clothing store. My first clothes. <laughs> New business! Yay! Oh, don't start. When I was like, I'm never new things. Bloody hell. I'm going to have no time left in the week. Jesus, do you know how long the last episode took me to edit? Yeah. About four hours. <laughs> okay. Oh, we so don't have time. We don't no, have time. No. But yes, relationships. Relationships. Relationships we're talking about today. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> we're going to deep dive into dating relationships virginity <laughs> stories i thought that'd be a very interesting oh. thing to talk about because mm-hmm. i i lost my, my virginity very very late compared to a lot of people that i was surrounded at that time and yeah i mean i was 19 when i lost my virginity no way. which a lot of people are so shocked about yeah. because of the fact that i do what i do for a living mm-hmm. everyone looks at me like oh wow she's very sexually active she's very oh yes oh. i bet she was at it at 15 years old and i'm just like <laughs> over here i'm like no it was really late for me and yeah i didn't really feel, feel the need to lose it earlier what about you though what's what's your story my story well <laughs> um i got into a relationship quite young um i was 16 so oh, wow mm, so yeah. did you lose it like at 16 yeah yeah i was um i was 16 and yeah, that was who I was with for a very long time. So that's, there's not much else to it really. Oh, wow. But um, he was, yeah, my first sort of proper relationship. I was with a few people beforehand, little like things at school, but mm-hmm. um, nothing like major. That was my first relationship. And yeah, I lost it at 16. So well, that's illegal age, isn't it? I know people who have lost it so much earlier though. Yeah. Like some oh of the people God, that yeah. I have spoken to or like know, they're like, yeah, I lost it at 13. And I'm like, 13? Are you just kidding me? Like yeah. I was still paying with my Bratz dolls. I had yeah. like my Barbie doll. Yeah. I had like the little Polly Pocket houses yeah. at 13. <laughs> like who's who's out having sex at 13? I know. Well, other than them, of course. But still, other I just them. feel like it's so early and so soon. Yeah. I feel like 16. I feel like that's, I feel like 16 yeah. is about average, but I mean, to be fair, I think there's a lot of people that lose it at like 19 and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's quite it's more common than you realize. Yeah. Um not you. <laughs> than you realize. I'm so it's, common. <laughs> you're so common, but um but yeah, I think it is uh it is yeah, it's it's pretty common. I was I was happy that I waited because yeah. I remember being in college and I was in the popular group at college. I was very impressed with myself that I actually managed to swindle my way in. Um, and obviously because I feel like everyone in the group, except for me and this one of the friend that I had, we were the only two in our group who hadn't already lost it. Mm. So I felt like the pressure of everyone at the time being yeah. like, when are you going to lose your virginity? Yeah. Like you're missing out on so much. Yeah. And I remember like going on a mission then to lose it. Yeah. And at the time I was like 17, 18. And, like, because I was wanting to lose it so much, I put so much pressure on myself. And it just... I'm so glad I didn't lose it at that time, in that time period. (laughs) Because I would have regretted it so much. Yeah. But did you feel like it was the right time for you? Um, I think so. So my (laughs) my situation was so different. Like, it was just... It was... Yeah, it it was a weird situation that I kind of had. So I got into a relationship at 16. Um, I was living in Derby. And I was commuting to Birmingham for college. And Mm -hmm. that's where I met my ex um and around that time so this is where my mom was quite ill um and I was commuting back and forth for a bit and then basically she died <laughs> <for> <laughs> trauma lap. I can't believe you just like you trauma 
Yeah, she, well, yep, she died. So that's that. Which is a very um, serious, it's very topic. serious topic. But I, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Yeah, that's um, probably the best way to cope with a lot of things. Yeah. Though. yeah. But um, yeah, so I was kind of going through all of that and I had to leave. It was just me and my mom at home. Mm-hmm. So I had to leave my house. Um, I went and stayed with my brother for a little bit, but to cut a very long story short, he basically couldn't look after me because I was commuting and mm-hmm. it was just finances and he just wasn't in a position to do that. So I ended up moving in with my boyfriend and his family because mm-hmm. um, they were in Birmingham and it would just made sense um so I moved in with them and then to be honest that was that was it really like it was just me and him then for oh wow what at 16 at then? 16 yeah 16. so your mom sadly passed away and then you literally had to move straight in with yeah. the person you were sick that's yeah, like and me, me and, at 16 as well me and my so ex young. have been together so we got together in the September and my mom died in the October so literally we'd only been to, we'd only known each other for about a month and a bit Oh, wow. And I moved in with him and his family because I was homeless, essentially. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesus. That's, like, so, so full on, So, though. that's, yeah. So, we, we kind of rushed straight into this relationship at a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. So, I mean, we waited a few months, I think. And then, yeah, we we did it. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> we, did we, did it. we did it. We did the deed. Um, but at least it was more, after. like, I feel like, can you look back and be like, I lost it with the right person. I lost it at the right time. Yeah. There was no regrets. Yeah. I, think I feel so. like that's the scariest thing when losing your virginity is that you can look back and be like, oh, maybe that wasn't the wasn't, right person. Yeah. Maybe, and then like, it's so horrible hearing people have regrets about it. Yeah. Cause you can never change the first time you have sex. Yeah. It's not like you can get older and be like, oh, well actually I don't want to count that one. So I'm going to count another um, one. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, there's only one time that you're going to lose your virginity. Yeah, no, exactly. But, yeah, that's yeah. crazy though, but. Yeah, so it was, it was a very different situation, but I def- yeah, I definitely feel like it was the right time and it kind of fell into place, I guess. That's but um, yeah, just very, very different stories. <laughs> that is, yeah, because but. I, well, I didn't lose it until after college. So okay. how I was like yeah. getting pressured and yeah. stuff and everyone being like, you need to lose it, you need mm. to lose it. Didn't lose it, which I was so happy about. Now looking back at it at the time, I was like, I'm a failure. Like, why does no one want to have sex with me? Aww. This is horrendous. <laughs> and there was, there were ch- there were times when I was able to have sex. Like the opportunity was there, but, but just, I just didn't take it. I wasn't yeah. ready. Yeah. And like, I didn't want to force myself if I knew I wasn't ready. It was just yeah. everyone else being like, you need to do it. But... Yeah, no, I left college because I studied TV and film. What did you do at college? Music. You did music? I did. Ooh, it makes sense. Why is she a singer la, now? La, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> Not a singer on the bottom of yeah. it. But yeah, so I left college and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I had a gap year. And it was like a month into my gap year where I went to a bar. This is how I met my first boyfriend. Mm. Went to a bar and apparently I was very, very drunk, which no surprises at that age I guess so (laughs) went to a bar and this guy was like he was a bartender I had a thing with bartenders apparently at that age which was crazy now looking back at it but yeah so I went up to him and I was like oh like let me get you on Facebook and then we started talking from Mm. there and like it was very slow he was he was a little bit older I think he was 25 and I was 19 which now looking back at it I'm like why would a 25 year old want to date a 19 year old Mate. and I just it gives me that icky feeling because yeah. now I'm that age I look back at it I'm like well I would never date someone who's 19 that's way too young for me yeah mentally and that's... physically they look like absolute yeah. fucking babies <laughs> I, yeah no literally I I had something similar but I think I was like maybe 15 14, 15, and I had a 19-year-old guy speaking to me. So I used to go to a lot of gigs and things. That's illegal. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, I used to go to, like, gigs and things like that. So, like, I met quite a few musicians or whatever. I don't even know how I met this guy. I actually don't think he was a musician. Um, My life has not changed there. But um, (laughs) anyway, (laughs) um, yeah, and we just became friends. But then me and my, my mate, we used to go out with him and, like, just chill but looking back now he was like 19 20 years old hanging out with like 15 year olds that screams predator that's weird isn't it that's (laughs) that's just not okay yeah and i I, think it's different when you're in that in that situation and when you're that age as well because you're not thinking like that no it's like oh my god there's this like guy like speaking to me and he's interested and i'm like 15 i'm like oh i'm so hot oh my god no like <laughs> 15, Jesus. no 15 year old is hot no, and if you know then you need to get arrested or you need to be on some sort of register okay oh, yeah it's uh 
Yeah, it's not okay. No, it's absolutely not. So then anyway, me and him were like talking and we, we'd arranged like meat or something. And the night before my dog died, like my family dog, right? It was horrendous. It was the worst time of my life. I cried every single day. So I canceled on him and I was like, oh, yeah. just to let you know, won't be able to make it. My dog's dead. Um, so it's a, it's a no, One right? And traumatic then, things. And then we didn't speak for a month and then we sort of carried on dating. And he told me then, he was like, I thought you were lying about your dog dying. And I was like, what? He was like, well, I thought you just use that as an excuse not to go out with me. And I was like, "Um, I would never use that excuse. Maybe I've used the excuse that another family member has died before in the past to get out dating and work. But my dog is never, no, is never, never being used no, in that never sort lie of about a dog to Never. <laughs> Dogs, dog de- a dog, dog death is way dog too death. far. A yeah, dog death. Dog it's really death. hard to say. A dog, a dog death. A dog death. Yeah. It's, it's out of the question, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, and then we just like dating and then we sort of just ease into it and then lost my virginity. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was nice. okay. I think that that sex side of that relationship was a bit off. Mm. Um, it was very one-sided, but no hate to the man, I guess. No hate to him whatsoever, but why are you shagging a 19-year-old? <laughs> Looking yeah. back and I'm like, dodgy. Yes. Uh, it's a no from me. It's a no. But then like I can't even say much because after like two years I think I was like 21 I was like dating someone who was like 34 yeah I think this is the thing though when you get older you can make better decisions Mm -hmm. so like age when when you get older age doesn't matter as much because you're an adult you can do what you want yeah but I think you have to get past that sort of point where it's like you are still a teenager Mm -hmm. and like you are still growing up and that's it's not okay. Well, what do they say? It's like you don't mentally mature until like twenty five. You don't get you don't really, fully yeah. develop makes sense. until you're at least twenty five years yeah. old. Yeah, which is crazy mm. because like twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> like what? Like to be fair though, I look back at myself from the ages of like sixteen to twenty four, twenty three, and the amount of mistakes I've made and like the guys I've dated and like I was never like I was never fully innocent in like past relationships, which you'll get into. But, like, we're all learning, we're all growing, and, yeah, I just feel like between those ages, we're just unhinged. <laughs> well, funnily enough, you say that, I didn't really live my life like that because I was li- I was living the life, essentially, of, like, an, a, a, I was way more mature for my age, mm-hmm. and I was, like, in a relationship for so long that I never really had, like, those unhin- unhinged moments. <laughs> Like, I'm kind of doing that now. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, I feel but, like with you, you've gone, like, backwards. Yeah, so my, how mine's long... flipped. Like, it's so weird. That's wild. So yeah. how long were you with this guy then? So we were together just under 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, just under 10 years. So, yeah, no, you did the whole settling down thing. We got engaged. You got engaged. I was engaged. How did that feel? Good at the time. <laughs> <laughs> at the time, you're like, best together. Yeah. Looking back, you're like, I should have just been that oh. ring straight away. <laughs> What ring? <laughs> I've kind of lost it now. Um, no. <laughs> I hope you sold it. Get the Let's not get into that. Um, yeah, no, it was, yeah, well, 10 years. And I mean, yeah, we were, we were, I guess, childhood sweethearts for a very long time. And we got engaged. We had loads of good memories. And um, I guess I wouldn't change it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was, it was good while it lasted. Um, but yeah, like, in that time, I think because... I did rush into this relationship because I had nowhere to go and no one else to be with. Like, I was quite introverted and I was scared to make friends. I didn't have many friends over the years. Um, and I kind of lost the confidence in myself. And modeling actually helped me bring that yeah. like back out. But um, kind of, like we said, I guess, on one of the previous episodes, it's, it's still a character, like, when you do that. And that, that's why I lost all my confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's been really weird because I, I feel like only now am I actually living my life and finding the things that I want to do and being more me. And it's took not being in that relationship to do that, which is kind of sad. But at the same time, again, I don't regret having that relationship. Yeah. Um, but I kind of wish I could have done this a few years ago. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I just I just kind of wish that I I did it a few years ago. Um. But yeah, I don't regret the relationship and I'm happy with where I'm at now. Um, a lot has happened. I mean, we, we split up earlier this year. Um, mm. and so it's still so fresh though. It is still so fresh, like so, so fresh. 
um, and a lot is still going on and there's yeah there's a lot going on in the background still and but but it is what it is and myself I feel a lot better and mm. yeah but you look better as well though because obviously you. I've known you for a few years now yeah. And like, I feel like you have come out your shell and yeah. you are glowing. You've got that sort of after breakup glow oh, about you. Thank you. <laughs> where you are just radiating like fucking boss ass, Yay. bitch ass <laughs> energy. And I love it. Like, it's yeah. so nice to see it. Oh, thank you. No, it, feel, it feels good. It does feel good. Like, and as I said, it's, it's kind of weird that it takes something like that to make you feel a certain way. But uh, honestly, I, I felt quite trapped in the relationship and not, not, and not in like a bad way of, of him but just because of the situation of how it all happened mm. like I don't really have that much family as it is I have a few siblings and a couple of aunts and un- uncles I don't have a mom anymore my dad's not around mm. like I don't have that many people so uh his family was essentially my family and I don't know I the, it was always one of those things where they kind of said that they'd be there for me even if we split up and that has not happened mm. uh, so like it's that side of things has been quite difficult because I have literally had to start a complete fresh That's terrifying, and like though. it's it's just been it's been weird but I've managed it and as I said it's still going on now but mm-hmm. I've managed it and I've made so many friends and like I'm traveling all the time and it's just great I I, I love it so much Aww. like it's so it's so much fun I think but. it's great though because I can imagine being with someone 10 years yeah. you must have had that dependency on them yeah like it was just you two yeah yeah so the fact that you've had to just move out essentially or and well and then just like start again completely that's massive I think you're very fucking like you're strong and the fact that you've come out of a bad situation better and stronger and you know sexier then I think yeah you're smashing it Thank you. I think because you've gone through so much, yeah. I mean, what else is there to go through? Anything <laughs> that come, comes your way now, well, you'll, know, you'll know how to deal yeah, with it. Yeah, this is the thing, like, especially this year, so much has happened and it just kind of felt like more and more shit kept happening this year. And I'm, I've just always been waiting for the next thing to happen. <laughs> but, um, no, touch wood. Yeah, God. Uh, there's no wood. wood um, <laughs> that everything, yeah, everything seems to be picking up now. And, yeah, as I said, there's still a lot of shit going on in the background. And there's still things I'm having to deal with. Um, but I'm focusing on me now. And that's kind of all that matters. But, yeah, it's been, it's been a long-ass year. Like, it's, it's gone quite fast, actually. But it has also <laughs> been a long-ass year. Yeah. Um, but... Well, yeah. next year can only get better. Oh yeah, I am right, so I'm is only so excited, so excited for next year. Like I am so ready for it, and yeah, I, I've got so much going on now. And obviously, this is new as well, and this is going to be is. so fun next year. And I'm doing my music finally. That was something I kind of stopped whilst I was in this relationship. Um, it, I just, I, I mean, I guess I fell into the modelling world, but. I just kind of slowly stopped doing the music for some reason. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing that. And there's, there's a lot to keep me going, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, got to keep your mind busy. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I feel like a lot of people have kind of been like, you are strong and stuff like that, but they don't really see the the side when you are just at home, like, really depressed and really down and the, yeah. the hard days. And not even about, like, a, a breakup, like, because that really was a good thing for me. It's just the rest of the stuff that comes with it like like you say about the dependency like it was just us two and mm. me and that family so to come out of that and be like oh I have no one like I was I was homeless for a bit this year like there was a lot of stuff going on where I was just on my own um having to build new relationships and friendships with people get back into the dating well, let's say get back into the date get into the dating world <laughs> yeah because you never really had it to begin no, with though like no. you literally just got into a relationship moved in and then yeah. that was it yeah literally i, I be, like i never dated anyone ever mm-hmm. like really i had a, oh, i hate dating I'm, i've given it a miss now i yeah. can't be asked with it yeah yeah not not gonna lie it's it's not really about it <laughs> yeah because it's so different now yeah and like I sort of took a few years out of dating, I just couldn't couldn't be asked with it. But I took a few years out, and now I'm sort of dabbling back into it, yeah. like you know, putting my toe in and yeah. seeing what's around. And like one of the first guys that I was speaking to was like, "Add me on Snapchat." I'm like, "Ugh." Uh. I'm like, Ugh, what, are you a fucking child? You Snapchat? Ten. Yeah. Do you remember when we used to use Snapchat oh back, in, like, back when we were like 14, yes, 15 years yeah. old? Yeah, I don't even know how to use it now. Yeah, I'm so like... like yeah, literally, it's all changed. Yeah. You can stalk people on Snap Maps now, which is terrifying. Yeah. You've got all your memories on there yeah. from when you were a little fetus. It's just, yeah, it's horrendous. But 
yeah, so I was talking to this guy and he was just like, oh, add me on Snapchat. Yeah, so I ended up adding him on Snapchat, obviously, because I was like, why not? Might as well. Someone to talk to. Yeah. Um, and it was just flirting, but it was trying to sex. You know, when you're not really... In the, I, was, I was like, I can't be honest with this shit. Yeah, no. Like, I'm, I'm a fully grown adult. Like, yeah. I don't have time for this. I'm working. Yeah, I'm working. <laughs> I'm working. And yeah, I think the only time he sort of tried to meet up with me was... At like midnight one night. It was like, I think it was like a Tuesday night. Oh, midnight. God. And like, he was like trying to flirt and stuff. And then he was like, oh, like, I should come and see you. And I was like, oh, like, oh, uh, really? No, no, thanks. No, like, no. if you want to meet up, go for a drink. I'm more than happy to, but not a fucking midnight. Are you joking me? I've got work in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, it just, it, it's just bullshit, isn't it? Yeah. I just hate dating in this day and age. Yeah. I, I, to be fair, I still really haven't been on dates like I haven't really gone on any dates it's just kind of I've been chatting to people here and there um but I'm not I mean at the moment I'm not really looking I guess purposely for a relationship because I have just come out of something so long yeah but like I'm happy to talk to people and if something was just to happen then I'm I'm here for it I guess but um I'm I need to focus on me right now oh, so like uh this is not what I'm <laughs> focusing on right now 10 years sorry boys and girls <laughs> okay. both, um, of both. both <laughs> um but yeah I don't know I, I feel like my thing at the minute is I'm I'm so bad for toxic musicians uh, <laughs> and see, I need I've, to I've been through I it I need to get out of this it's not mm. good it's not good for me I've been through Can't it I um it. I once dated an Australian musician that just sounds great it's oh, his accent I think it was oh, his yeah. accent that really sold it for me yeah. but I was at uni and I was modeling at the time. Nice. And I think he'd worked with the same photographer that I had worked with. Mm-hmm. So hence why he must have seen my profile. And he had a show in Birmingham. And we were like chatting and stuff. And then he was like, oh, do you want to come to this show? And I was like, okay. And like, when I went to this gig, it was at the O2 Academy, which mm-hmm. is quite a big, but he was in, he was in a small room, so whatever. Oh. But <laughs> it's not as big as like five softs, it's fine. But yeah, so I ended up going to see him at this gig and... It was so exciting though. It was like yeah. something out of a Wattpad, what, like whatever, what, what is it? Like Wattpad fan fiction or something. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, You know yeah, like fan yeah, fiction yeah, that people yeah. write about like 1D or something. It just, it felt like that. You were living your teenage dream. I was living it. And like his accent, because like his oh whole God, band was yeah. Australian. Nice. I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and he wasn't a bad looking guy either. And we like, we walked around the whole of the O2 Academy. So they, like the big stages, Aww. we were like running on the stage, pretending like, you know, playing Aww, around. Like, how cute. Oh, how wholesome. And then we sat on like the chairs at the top of the, of the arena, whatever it's called. And we were just chatting and it felt really, really romantic. Like, Aww. honestly, it was something out of a pissing fairy tale, which I'm so annoyed about. Um, <laughs> but it was really, really nice. But again, from Australia, I'm from Birmingham. Bit of a distance, not gonna a lie. A little bit of a distance, but we do like an Aussie. Oh, we do, mm. and ugh, make an exception, to oh, be fair. Yeah. When I fall, I fall so hard. So when I got back to my, cause I stayed at my friends that night, I yeah. literally finished off for the gig. We had like a little kiss. I was like, ooh, oh, butterflies. And then I went back to my friends and we were just sat there and I was like, how much would it be, be to get to a flight to Australia? Like, yeah. But he was on tour, so he was oh, in, I... he was in the UK for like another three weeks. Yeah. And then he was going to come back to London. And he was like, let's meet up. Let's spend like a few days together. I was like, oh my God, okay. So I went down to London. He worked every single day. He was like, I'm going to be in the studio again today. And I was like, bro, I've come down all the way to London. Famous musician words. I know. And it's like, all right then. I'm on tour. I've got to be in the studio. Okay, whatever. (laughs) Go to every port probably. But yeah, so I was just like in this hotel room in London on my own, yeah. waiting for him to finish his bloody meetings, whatever he was doing with rock sound, I think at the time. Do I, do I know of this person? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I'll tell you, I'll tell you off. Bob, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I don't even think his band's active anymore. Okay. Like they did a good few years, like pushing out music, going on tour around like America and stuff. Yeah, nice. And then they just sort of fizzled out. Mm. And I don't think they've released any music for about two years, mm. even a year maybe. I don't even know. Yeah. But yeah, no, it just like we spent a few few days together in London. You can guess what we got up to. And yeah, and then he just flew back to Australia and never saw him ever again. <laughs> And I was heartbroken. I nice. was honestly so upset. Aww. I fell for it. Aww. I think it was mainly the whole fairy tale. Yeah. It felt really magical. When when was this? Oh Did my god! I want to say about twenty eighteen. Oh, twenty eighteen. Okay. 
yeah, or 2019, early 2019. Aww. But yeah, mad. But then we, uh, we've cleared the air since though. Maybe we need a little uh, <laughs> little trip to Australia. Oh, I don't think so. It's probably, it's probably with someone else already. Oh, but, no, fuck him. No, we, we've, we've cleared the air since though. Yeah, like, we, had, we had a good long, about three hour conversation Aww. over the phone. And yeah, we just caught each other up on our lives. So now we're in a, we're in a really, really good place. And Aww. I wish him all the best. Oh, nice. I mean, yeah, so... It's really nice. It was. It was a really like exciting experience. Yeah. So musicians, they're fun, but I wouldn't trust one again. <laughs> Where's you? You're like, I'm talking to this one. I'm talking to this one. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Five. <laughs> I'm going to see one in the in in a gig next week as well. I've got this one that I'm going to see. You're like talking to so many, and I'm like, girl. <laughs> I'm not I need at your all. Riz skills. Oh my I god! I need them. Teach me. But I have no riz. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just go in with my little self and like, hi. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really what guys like, though. They're like, Maybe. oh yeah, she's really like innocent and cute and see. And they're like, boom. <laughs> and I'm like, boom. boom. I'm the most annoying person you've ever met. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, every time I look at my phone, it's like five messages from Rachel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm like, like voice notes. I, I shared something the other day, and it was like, I'm shy when you get to know me, but then I'm the most annoying person, and that is literally me. I, I, love I that. won't, I won't leave you alone. If if we speak, you're you are you are part of my gang now. So I will send you memes. I will send you reels. I will harass you. I will want to see you because I just I, I'm in my era now of yeah. doing things. So I'm like, yes, let's go hang out. Let's go do something. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll just be a little house hermit, and I've done that for ten years, and I don't want to do that again. <laughs> ten years. So yeah. did you like proper settle down then when you're in this relationship? Yeah. Like, you know, cooking meals, oh, plan I about cooking. kids maybe. Were you did you ever talk about like talk about having kids and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I went through a phase, um, maybe a few years into the relationship, maybe maybe like five years in. I went through a phase where like obviously I always miss my mum, but like it was quite a a, a bad time for my I never really grieved. I still haven't grieved my mom's death ever because I just I just haven't done it, mm. which is really unhealthy. Would not recommend. Um, therapy. But <laughs> therapy is needed. Um, <laughs> but around this time, it was kind of like I wanted something to fill that void. So in my head, I was going, I do want kids soon. Like I want, I want someone to look after because I don't really have that for me anymore. That mm. sounds really sad and weird but do you know no, what I, get I mean it, you have like this mother instinct yeah. in you that yeah you just wanna, that's like, exactly fulfill. it yeah so for a while for, for a while I knew we weren't in the place too but my body and my head was going I could do that soon because I want to mother something but I mean we had so many like pets and mm -hmm. things like that that it was kind of like okay no let's just stick to the animals for a while I'm so glad I didn't because god like that would have like it would have added oh so much God. more stress to the breakup. Yeah, yeah, really would have. And I mean, maybe maybe we wouldn't have broken up if we had kids. I don't know. Life mm. life would have been maybe a bit different. But I mean, we got engaged. We got engaged in 2018. Um, and I it remember was, seeing it was that Disney. video. Yeah, oh it, was, it was amazing. Like, it was, it was incredible. And yeah, I can never take that away from our relationship. Do you know what I mean? Like, it happened and it was great. Um, but then COVID hit and I feel like that definitely didn't help our relationship um and then it just I would say probably slowly just got a little bit worse and worse after that um but I think it's one of those we were together just a little bit too long and because we were together from 16 it was about time that it needed we, we needed to find ourselves mm. me I would probably say a little bit more but um yeah that's why I'm not really I'm not purposely looking for anything at the minute because I've got to sort my head out I need I do want to go into therapy I need to actually sort my own problems out and traumas and you know daddy issues <laughs> daddy issues um, oh my god but, that could be a whole episode in itself yep. yeah. um but yeah so but we did settle we we moved out of his mom's place we went and lived in a flat and then after the flat we went and moved into a house um like we had our own places and yeah we did really settle and we had multiple jobs and it was it was too mature for our age that's what it was but I mean I matured at 16 because I I had to look after my you mom had to, yeah yeah you like had to it mature. was it was just me and her so I was her carer I was back and forth from school and stuff like I was going through some stuff anyway and I was having counseling at the time for my own kind of issues and then my mom was diagnosed with cancer like just less than a year before she actually died but um 
yeah, I, I had to be at home looking after her because there was no one else. So I wasn't at school. I had my all my schoolwork at home and everything. Um, and I was going to appointments with her. And was I there was, no one to care or anything? There was so my my siblings helped a little bit, but mm. I lived at home with her. So I was the one that did everything with. We were like best friends. It, it was just us two. So yeah. I I looked after her and. Yeah, so for me, going into then this relationship, I was already so mature, because I'd, I'd had to be, that I was just mature for ages. And I, I still am quite mature, like, for, mm. for even my age now, but I'm starting to live my life and relax a little bit now, which is which is nice, because I haven't been able to You need to let to your do hair that. down. You I, to, I'm trying, it's growing. It's growing. <laughs> you need to do things that, like... Yeah. I mean, you need to make some mistakes, because I've definitely made some mistakes, like getting blackout pissed on a night out, yeah. and not knowing where you were, <laughs> and then, like... Like taking a weed down an alleyway and then going home with some random guy. I feel like you just need oh to. Oh my god. Maybe maybe not as extreme yeah, as that. Yeah, maybe not. But maybe just I'm, I'm go a bit there. wild. You I know? feel like I've done a few things that maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> or <But>, a hinge. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely way more relaxed. Like if. If people at college, I really struggle to make friends. And I feel like if those people were to see me now, I'm a completely different person. Like, I was so shy. And that's when I got with my ex as well. Like, I was a complete different person. And I think even over the past few years, even as you say, like, when you met me, I was so different. I was not, like, the person I am today. And a lot of people say that about me. And I really like it because it means... I'm relaxing. And I I don't know. It's, yeah. You only have yourself to worry about now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I think you're going to save so much money as well. Oh my God, yeah. It's not even like you need to buy you both dinner. No. You just buy yourself just buy dinner. Buy myself dinner. And you can do what you right. want. Like, yeah. if you wanted to go out, it's not like you're there ringing him up being like, okay, I'm going to do this. Is that okay? Like, yeah. what have you got planned oh or my, whatever? Oh my God, yeah. The freedom I've had, like, over the past few months, I, I can just go out and, like, I don't need to get back for anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then, like, like you stayed over the other night. Yeah, it, was it got just to like, about midnight, and I was like, you can stay over if you yeah, want. I'd rather like you stay over than not drive home at this yeah. like this late. And it, that that side of it is is great. Mm. It is nice, and not like he would never let me do that. But it's just when you're in a relationship like that, you want to be back with your partner. And like, yeah. I used to hate staying away. Like, if I ever did model jobs, I used to be on the phone to him, like crying sometimes because I just felt so oh. like anxious to be away from him and what I was comfortable with Mm. and I think that's why it also maybe took a not a while for us to break up but we broke up two years ago as well two years ago and I think I remember this because there was like a sleepover or something yes and I was invited with someone that I used to know yeah and you were there and I turned up I was like oh my god yeah Rachel hi <laughs> so I, I, I remember briefly yeah. that like you split up but then obviously you like posted on Facebook that you yeah. were together and I was like oh maybe it was just a blip yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well I if I'm completely honest I feel like the relationship probably should have ended there mm. but we wanted to try again and I think I was so comfortable and scared to go do my own thing that I went back and we kind of I think we were kind of forced into another situation again. We wanted to start dating again and start afresh because we never did that when we first got together. Mm. But we were forced and pushed into another situation where we had to move very quickly and we just ended up back in the same situation where we were just at each other all the time. We weren't dating, we weren't doing... So nothing had changed. So then, uh, yeah, we, we didn't actually do what we planned to do to try and fix the relationship. So over the past few years... It just just got worse and worse, I think. But Ten years, and, though. Like, yeah. I, I can imagine... I can understand why you got back together because, again, yeah. 10 years, you're like, do we really want to throw that yeah, away? Yeah, exactly. Like, you exactly. were really, really good at one point. Yeah. So, of course, you're going to try and fix yeah. it. Yeah. But some things you just can't fix. It's like yeah. throwing a glass on the floor and it's smashing and being like, okay, fix that then. Like, yeah. How, how are you going to fix it? That's it's a, smashed into a million pieces. Exa- <laughs> exactly. And I think sometimes things just can't be fixed. We had a good time. We had a good run. And we were together from 16 years old. And I think yeah so it's been hard I think to speak to some people about it because they don't really understand the situation like some people are like oh yeah when you get out of a relationship like this fucking blah 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 and it's like hold your horses like <laughs> it's ten, 10 years is a long time to be with someone especially how we got together as well and like he met my mom as well like mm. he met her before she died a couple of times and that had a massive impact on me because I really liked that fact that I was with someone that did actually meet my mom. Mm. So even just little things like that now is quite hard because whoever I get with next, 
they're not going to know my mum and little things like that do like does affect me sometimes but I mean you can't just live your life going oh I, I can't do that because you know my mum do you know what yeah. I mean like it's just one of those things but there's a lot of of trauma and stuff that comes from it and that I've kind of got to still grow from and it's going to take a little while but I mean I think I'm doing all right you are so, you are doing okay and I feel you. like you should be very proud of yourself the fact that you've now got out of that situation yeah and you're thriving and you've managed to get that confidence baby. back <laughs> but that's that's massive yeah. like, you should be very very proud of yourself thank you because I'm, I'm no, like, oh my god <laughs> but no like this is this has been a lot about mine because it's been a, it's been a year but um you, Still very fresh. Your relationships and things, Ooh, obviously, like you've so kind of had, I guess, a similar thing this year. Like, yeah, that's we spoke. That's kind of how we started speaking again. Yeah, boy trauma. Boys, boys, boys. Yeah, boys, I mean, boys, boys, so. I'm like I say, like I'm. When I fall for someone, I fall very, very hard yeah. and very, very fast, and it can just move very, very quickly. That it's not maybe not the greatest thing. Yeah. So I was, I was sort of seeing someone recently. And yeah, it's just, <laughs> it just ended. Oh. And I was really upset, but thank God I had my dog because my, mm. literally I'd be crying and my dog would be licking my tears and it was just, it was horrendous. Like yeah. it was just after my birthday as well. Yes. So I was like, I had the really high of my birthday. I was like loving life and then boom, heart shattered. And that was that. So yeah, that was quite a very traumatic experience, but I guess with heartbreak, because I have dated and I have had my heart broken so many times already, like, it's just another person, isn't it? It's like yeah. another thing, another time, especially because you get to that point and you're like, I can, I, I, yeah, I can imagine having kids with this person. I can imagine yeah. getting married. I can imagine, like, our life together. Yeah. That when it ends, it's like, well, now what am I going to do? Yeah. Like, where am I going to go? Like, who am I going to date? Yeah. What am I... Like, who even am I? Yeah. I need that independence back, yeah. especially, like, like you were saying. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like a whole starting afresh and figuring out who you are as a person. 100%. And enjoying your own company again. And that could yeah. be, yeah, that could be really, really difficult. But, I mean, I've been in and out of sort of situationships, relationships, and, you know, talking phases for yeah. quite a while. I've only ever had one long-term relationship. I think all the other relationships that I've had have lasted maybe like two, three, four months, if that. Mm. I guess because before, I don't know. I guess maybe I was a little bit psycho when I was younger. I'll happily admit it. I feel like any ex that is currently watching this podcast <laughs> is like, oh, here we go. Now she's getting to the fucking truth, you stupid bitch. Because, I, right, yeah, no, I, ha I have I have done things and I've like, I've not maybe not behaved the best that I should have in this t at the time. But again, it's going through my own traumas, going through my own sort of yeah. mental health issues. So... I like to think now I'm in a very, very good place that yeah. whoever I let into my life, they're going to be like, yeah, Beck's fucking sick and she's got the best Aww. boobs. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. have. I mean, so, I mean, it's true. But so, I, yeah. you're like, you're also glowing. Like, I think we're both in this point at the minute. Mm -hmm. Like, life is good. Life feels yeah. good. You're glowing. You seem, you're just doing amazing. Like, you're absolutely killing it right now. And I Aww. think that's, no, <laughs> I, I think it's amazing. And again, it's one of those things that sometimes we need this shit to happen to kind of, look after ourselves and it's actually like a chapter focus. ending yeah and you read in the next chapter and yeah. it's something more exciting yes. and yeah I Definitely. feel like because we are at this age now where we're like 26 and I feel like some people can look at us and be like well you're 26 surely you should be settled down by now mm -hmm. you should be like you know in a stable relationship and I feel like um people just assume that we're meant to be mothers or we're meant to do yeah. these things yeah. that you know make us housewives and shit and it's like well no because that's not I don't think that's what life's about though no personally like I don't I don't want to be put on this earth to then people say well you've got to do this mm -hmm. you've got to bring up a family you've got to you know raise your kids it's like I don't want that yeah like at one point in my I life I could have kids well no life. now now I don't even know there was a bit no. of a time where I was like mm, I could imagine having myself like a little like a little girl yeah you yeah. know it'd be really nice but now I think I'm at that stage now where I am like I can't think of anything worse than having a child Edit. and looking after a child <laughs> and living life oh. for that child. Yeah, Because yeah. I look at my parents and look at how much they had to give up to yeah. raise me mm. and my brothers. I'm like, I don't even want that. Yeah. Like, I just want to be able to go on holiday whenever I want to go on holiday. I want to be able to, yes. you know, bring a different guy home every night if I want to. 
Like that should that should be okay as long as if you're doing it in a healthy, safe way. Yeah you should be okay yeah. but I feel like a lot of people look down on girls who go on dates yeah. and you know talk to multiple guys as long as if it's all consensual and yeah. everyone's okay and you know that you're not cheating or anything because cheating is fucking shit yeah. but yeah as long as if it's all like safe consensual and healthy I guess I don't see the issue with no. it like I feel like a lot of girls now get slut shamed or body shamed yeah. and it's like, but why though? Yeah. Because when I was growing up, I would, you know, speak to my guy friends and they were like, oh, I'm dating this girl, dating this girl, shagging this girl this weekend, doing this, doing that. And they would never get looked, up, like, no. looked down upon. No, 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 no. Or like frowned upon or anything like that. But then as soon as I'm like, oh, I've got, I'm going on a date. And they're like, yeah, but didn't you go on a different date with a different guy like last month, you yeah. fucking slut? Yeah. And it's like, but, but you just told me all the girls what's that you're the dating. Difference? <laughs> yeah, there's no difference here at all. No. Like, just, just, yeah. And it's just... I think it's just double standards, especially in dating and sex and relationships and yeah. stuff. It's like, if a girl has a body count more than 10, it's like, oh God, she's gone yeah. around. Mm-hmm. But if a guy has a body count more, more than 50, it's like, yeah, what, yeah. A, what a lad. Yeah, lad, oh, lad. Yeah, like, what's the best boob size you've ever had? <laughs> and it's just like, that's yeah. not fair. Come yeah. off it. Like, we are all got put on this earth. I could go on a massive tangent about everything. We all got put on this earth I to reproduce. <laughs> like, that is the purpose of a human being, to yeah. reproduce. And do you know how to reproduce? Fucking sex, right? You, you, <laughs> you're meant to have sex. We yeah. have that urge. All humans have an urge to have sex. If you look at dogs, dogs are always humping shit because that's what their purpose is. They're meant to reproduce as well. So, like... We are meant to be it's humping natural. each other. <laughs> well, put it, put it. Let's me. go. Yeah, oh. let's let's go, Rachel. <laughs> but we are, and I, yeah, sex yeah. and love. And it's so like it's that. so normal, and it it's okay. <laughs> do you know it's what I mean? Like, so okay. it, it, yeah, it's so okay to talk about. And uh, do you know what though? I feel like for me as well, it it's taken a while to actually feel comfortable to talk about this sort of stuff and like obviously I do like OnlyFans now and stuff mm-hmm. like that but it's taken a little while to actually feel confident in my own self to be able to talk about sex and like I'm literally posting about sex toys on my Instagram now and it's just yeah. like I'm a 26 year old fucking woman <laughs> like I can post whatever the fuck I want yeah but it, it's taken so long to f- to have the confidence to do that and it's like why everyone fucking Fox. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone has sex. It's Sorry great. if my brothers are listening to this. <laughs> but everyone has sex. Everyone uses toys and if you don't, I would highly recommend. Very. Um, yes. But yes. funnily enough, you say that, I only used my first toys a few years ago. Really? Really. And I think it was because of one of those things again. Mm-hmm. When I was 16 and I got into this relationship, around my teens, I I was had so much going on that I did not experiment at all when I was younger. And then I got into this relationship and we were we were both each other's firsts as far as I'm aware. We were. We were both I'm aware. We were both We were both each other's first and we were experiencing all this new stuff together. So but we just never really I think we bought a toy maybe a few years into the relationship, but it was something I never really I was scared to do because I'd never tried it before. So I was just like, oh my God, I'm too shy for this. Like, (laughs) is this normal? And then as the years went on, on, I was like, this is fucking normal. Like I should be doing this. So I I only bought my first sex toys a few years ago. Wow. And yeah, I mean, I'm having a great time now. (laughs) Like I'm not going to complain, but like on it, yeah, hand on heart. Like, and if you don't use them, you don't have to use them. But I mean, don't feel scared. Do you know what I mean? Like, you should be able to talk about it openly. Yeah. Like I remember me and my mom's relationship, especially when I was first like discovering sex and stuff. We were very, very open. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe too open, I guess. But I think I remember I I had a three three uh, and three no three person. (laughs) Fun time. Fun fun time. And I think the first thing I did when I got home, I was like, Mom, guess what? I I had a (laughs) three. I did this. And she was like, oh, did you enjoy it? And I was like, it's all right. And yeah, that that was it. But I think because I sort of, I've grown up in a household, which I was, was, I'm so happy about now looking back at it, where we were all just very open about sex and that we could talk to one another. Maybe, maybe not. I wouldn't really go to my dad about it, I guess, because it'd be a bit weird. But I could just go to my mom and be like, what does this mean? What does this do? Like, I'm a bit confused. Like tell me about this and she was always open about it yeah which I felt was so so important to have that relationship even if it's just like with a best friend at the time like yeah a hundred percent I I complete like I completely agree and I feel like I I didn't like unfortunately have that because Mm. 
I was 16 when my mom died. So it was like around that time, I think is the time you probably would start speaking to your parents or sisters or whatever about that sort of stuff. And me and my sister weren't really close at that time. So mm-hmm. now we, I tell her everything, like everything. Um, <laughs> but I mean, we've had our, we've had our moments, but now we're probably closer than ever. And it's probably because I'm older. But yeah, back then I didn't really have anyone to speak to about that. So it took me a while to actually get into the the sexual life, I guess. And uh, I'm I'm still learning now. Like I honestly, there's still things I'm kind of going, I'm still anxious. Like if I go and meet up with someone, I'm like, oh my God, like this is still all quite new to me. Like being with different people. And it it does all come back from being younger because I just... I started at a very late age, I guess. So it's it's really weird when you actually look this deep into stuff as well, because everyone's lives are so different. And yeah, I think it's nice to talk about it so openly. Yeah. So I I love the fact that like, we've got this podcast now that we can talk so openly. And hopefully like if anyone is watching or listening that they're not, they don't feel so alone because they can listen to this and be like, oh, actually I'm, I'm going through the same sort of thing. But yeah, I remember as well being in my first relationship with that 25-year-old, 26-year-old. And I remember talking about it. I was like, well, I want to try this. I kind of want to get tied up, whatever. <laughs> like, I, I wanted to try it. That was something that I really wanted to, you know, mm-hmm. give it a go. And I remember being like, can you maybe tie me up one day? You know, just tie my hands up. And he was like, well, what would I get out of that? And I'm like, bro, you'd get the luxury of seeing me naked on your Tied bed. up. What do you even mean? Yeah. Um. So I didn't experiment with that sort of stuff until a little bit later. Mm. Um. Until I was about 22. I can tie you up. Well, you can tie me up any day, babe. But yeah, so I guess it just depends who you've got around and who you're comfortable with talking to about yeah. that situation. Because with that guy in particular, I couldn't be so open about sort of my interests and my kinks and everything like that. Whereas yeah. when I got with a relationship, when I, when I got into a relationship when I was like 22, yeah. we were very both, we were both very much like interested in yeah. trying different things. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, it was good. It was, <laughs> it, was it was good. It was good. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I definitely think it took us a while in the 10 year relationship to, to try things. But I mean, we were open to trying because we were so, both so new into it but at the same time I think I was always quite shy and quite uh, I was just scared I think and there was even points I mean oh god going through like my pills and like implants and stuff like that as well there was times where I was like am I actually asexual like Mm. uh, I I just didn't know and just towards I mean towards the end I think it was just I didn't want to have sex with him Mm. um I think that's a big like I don't want to be with you anymore (laughs) yeah as shit as it is uh, like because I'm definitely not asexual Mm -hmm. um (laughs) figure that one out (laughs) but um (laughs) but it it takes yeah it definitely takes experiencing new things to realize obviously what you like and I'll say I'm still I'm still learning now Mm -hmm. completely honest I think you're always learning to be fair everyone's different you never stop learning throughout your life there's always going to be a new toy or a new fucking porno yeah. that you're gonna <laughs> come across, and you're gonna, oh, that's unlocked yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and apparently your sexual kinks change throughout your life as well. Yeah, maybe not drastically, but you always. I want to have sex on a boat. That's really a weird, boat? but that's 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 one of my that things. That'd be hot. I've never had sex on a boat, and not like I may maybe a little like cute little narrow boat, but no like. Someone take me on a cruise. Do you know what I'm saying? A canal boat. <laughs> oh, narrow boat. Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham canals. Oh, Come on, beautiful. let's go. Just outside the Sea of Life Centre, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to get loads of messages now. I own a yacht. <laughs> That'd be very nice. I see what you did there. I also want to have sex on a boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a Hit nice up. boat in like Miami or something. Oh Maybe my not God, Birmingham, yeah. but somewhere nice like that. What's one of your fantasies? Go on, tell me. Fantasies? Yeah. Um, you know what? I don't really know. I mean... There's certain things that, you know, would get me going. But I don't think... I don't think I have any in, in opposed to maybe, like, having sex on a boat. I don't, <laughs> maybe, very, I don't know why. It's so random of me. But I'm just so like, random. that would be hot. Like, it Fifty Shades be, of Grey did it to me, I think. Not gonna yeah, lie. Fifty Shades of Grey opened mm. a hole. I want a sex yeah, dungeon do. so bad. Oh, my God. Like, just a red room. Oh, let's, my God. Oh, my God. Let's have a sex dungeon 
upstairs yeah <laughs> in, in my bedroom in your bedroom <laughs> sort it <laughs> to be honest i feel like maybe we should leave it there we could have carried on talking for absolutely hours i know i feel like there's so much more we can talk about as well so again like if there's any leave your like relationship stories mm-hmm. and um i don't know any advice what about what's your longest relationship do you know what i mean when did like, you lose your virginity when did you lose your virginity <laughs> tell um, us everything our email yeah. will be down in the description and if you are listening on any streaming platforms then come over to instagram leave us a little dm and yeah because we'd love to know yeah we look hot so come over to our instagram <laughs> yeah see what we look like yeah I'm a massive boobs, I'm blonde, got great eyes. I have small boobs and I'm not blonde. (laughs) Sometimes I'm blonde. For our audio listeners. Yes. But yeah, no, thank you so, so much for listening to this podcast. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. And yeah. Bye everyone. Bye. (laughs)